So with Zambia getting thrashed 5 0 by Japan, Haiti giving England a run for their money, Denmark battling it out with China, and the US of A looking to retain their crown, ladies and gentlemen, the Women World Cup is heating up. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Football with Priscilla. I am Priscilla, obviously. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be looking at the games that were played. These include USA versus Vietnam, Zambia versus Japan, England versus Haiti, and Denmark versus China. But before we get into the video for today, make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and turn your notifications on to know when next I post a video. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I wrote some notes down because, wow. I wrote some notes down because a lot of things happened today and I just thought like if I kept them in my mind, I would forget. So I was like, you know what, let me write them down. So we have a lot of talking points for today. And the first game that we're going to be talking about is Zambia versus Japan. That's because this hits home. For anyone that is new to the channel, I am Zambian, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to start with the Zambian game because for it, my emotions, my hope, everything was invested in this game. So yeah, let's get into this game. So Zambia versus Japan. Now here are my talking points. The first one is there were too many long balls in that game. Like everyone was thinking whenever they had the ball, pass it to Barbara. Pass it to Barbara. Pass it to Barbara. And it got so annoying because for a long period of time, anytime they had the ball, anytime one of the Zambian players had the ball, they would see that their friends are free. But the first thought was long balls to Barbara. I don't know if that was a tactical decision by the Zambian uh, coach, Bruce Moape, I don't know, but for some reason, the girls kept on hitting long balls and it stopped working. Not even it stopped. It never even started because from the first minute, Japan kept on coming at us. Japan caused us problems. And the funny thing is, you'd think that Zambia would win the aerial duels, but no, Japan was winning everything, including the aerial duels. And every time Zambia tried their long balls, Japan was, were actually the first people to get to the ball. And you could see that Barbara Banda was not in the game, Kunananji wasn't in the game, and Mapepa was also not in the game. Because every time we tried the long balls, Japan would intercept them, they would get the ball, and they start attacking us. So it was really annoying. I know for a fact that when I I was checking Twitter and I was checking on my WhatsApp. Everyone kept on saying, oh my gosh, stop those long balls. I don't know why we couldn't keep the football on the ground. I don't understand it. That was a tactical decision, but we couldn't just make short passes to one another. We couldn't play the ball through the lines. We we're just going long balls, which was annoying because it wasn't yielding any results whatsoever. And there were little spells towards the end of the first half and towards the end of the second half where we managed to at least play a bit of one-touch football here and there. But still, even then, we couldn't keep such a position football for a long period of time. We still reverted back to the long balls, which were not helping us. So for me, that's the first talking point. I think it needs to be addressed. I think we did not fully understand Japan. I think we did not tactically understand how to play against Japan because it looked like Japan knew what Zambia was going to do. And Japan teamed up against Barbara Banda, closing her off from any and every uh, pass that was coming through her. And it looked like Kundananji was also nervous because today she wasn't playing as good as we expect her to play. So it was it was really, it was quite something. The second token point I want us to talk about is the fact that our midfield was non-existent. Like there was no midfield there. There was no CDM, there was no attacking. We all became defenders. Like everyone except Barbara Banda and Kundananji the rest were playing as defenders because Japan were that good. Japan were playing right through our midfield. Our midfield was wide open. Our defense was stretched. It was so sad. Like you could see the girls were tired because of how many times Japan kept on coming at us. And it's because the pressure kept coming back because we couldn't get the ball fast enough or quick enough to Barbara Banda for her to hold our play. Every time they tried to get the ball to Barbara Banda, it would be intercepted by Japan. Hence, the ball would still come back and cause pressure on the defense. So the midfield was non-existent and the defense was stretched that is why the girls kept on falling here and there pulling muscles left right and center because there was so much pressure on them and let's not talk about players like tanaka and miyazawa they gave us a lot of problems tanaka to be specific she was running at us and she's got pace and so our defenders were failing to cope with that pace and that's why the girls were falling pulling muscles because tanaka was running at us like she kept on running granted on most occasions she was caught offside but the girl kept on running at us but can i say this zambia actually managed to keep their line and tanaka kept on catching herself offside because zambia was holding their line very well on that part i'll give them credit but oh my gosh tanaka really caused us problems today i was like this kid don't you get tired 
but yeah so zambia went through a lot so the midfield i think um the long balls were also a problem there was no position based football as well as we were tactically beaten like we were tactically beaten and it looked like bruce mwape had no tactical change whatsoever because he saw that the problem was the long balls in the first half i'm assuming he saw that but he kept on like we kept on he didn't change the tactics at least for me i didn't see any tactical change we still we still played the same way up until the game ended it was so frustrating and for me i wanted a player like ochumba who's calm on the ball ochumba is very calm she's like she's got a calm demeanor she doesn't panic when she has the ball she won't like kick the ball left right and center she'll calmly kick she'll calmly hold, keep hold of the ball at least she managed to fight um the opposition players and pass the ball ochumba is very calm she's got a calm demeanor so i expected her to be thrown first in the first few minutes of the second half but they came to bring her on like somewhere in the 70s i was like bring on ochumba oh my gosh and when you when she came you could see that zambia was at least trying to hold on to the ball but ish from the beginning until the end we could not hold on to the ball a lot of misplaced passes a lot of uh failed passes i don't even know because our pass accuracy was horrendous and yet we still insisted on playing long balls like it doesn't make sense to me but anyway japan played amazing football today like i was very impressed i was very i was very impressed with japan's um football today i enjoyed it and i'm sure if you're a third party you were enjoying that game granted you'll be like oh my gosh zambia is being thrashed but japan ladies and gentlemen was playing amazing amazing football clever passes they utilized the wings so well like their 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 wing the players that were playing in the wings were amazing they caused belemu and they caused a uh, tempo a lot of problems belemu was caught off so many times the girl that was playing on belemu's side for japan i don't know her name i've forgotten it she was having a field day on that side she kept on finding so much space i don't know how japan did not end up uh, having seven nil like a scoreline of seven goals because they had so much joy on on belemu's side but anyway it was very interesting i think this is a wake-up call to the zambian fans as well as the zambian female national team that this is the world cup and levels have to go up we now have to play elite kind of football we have to be very highly tactical and we have to be very clever with our passes so i hope bruce Mwape, i hope the zambia female national team are going to use this as a wake-up call this is now elite level football ladies and gentlemen this is the world cup it's the biggest stage so we have to up our levels as well but anyway listen it's not the end it's just the first game oh my god when i think about the fact that we are on our third choice goalkeeper because our second choice goalkeeper got a red card and we are playing spain <laughs> but it's fine it's fine we're going to win like have hope Bola Nalesa, ladies and gentlemen. Bola Nalesa. Anyway, so the second game I want us to talk about is England versus Haiti. Now, this one I did not see coming. I know when I was talking about, um, in my previous video, when I was talking about the teams that would uh, make it to the next stages, out of the group stage, I remember saying it would be England and also uh, I, I didn't put Haiti there because I was not familiar with their game. Haiti, I was not familiar with your game. I was impressed. Listen, players like Modessa and I don't know how to pronounce her name, Lois, and I don't know if it's Judy or Juedi. I don't know how to pronounce it. My bad if I pronounce it, if I don't pronounce it correctly. But I think these three players amazed me. Haiti shocked a lot of us. For me personally, not a lot of us, maybe just me. I did not expect Haiti to play the way they did. They took the game to England. I thought it would be smooth sailing for England, but oh boy, was I wrong. Haiti's front three were amazing. The only problem that they were missing is they were not clinical enough, but they played amazing football. That front three for me for Haiti is like, it was very good. I liked how they used their physicality. Their counter attacks were very good. The way they were interchanging among us, the three but they were not clinical at goal. So England should be glad they won that game because it was super, super close. It was very close. Haiti could have scored. It would have ended in a 1-1 game because Haiti were this close to um, scoring. So it was very interesting, you know. England, for me, were not convincing. I expected them to 
blow away Haiti, but no. Um, granted, yes, they were the better side versus Haiti, but they are still not convincing. Like, you'd expect the Euro champions to just blow people out of the water, but no. Haiti took the game to them. England tried here and there, and they ended up uh, only winning because of a penalty, but, but, like, you expect England to be more dominant than they were today so it was very interesting that was a game i did not see coming because of how close it was but it was very interesting it was an interesting watch i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i did now the next game i want to talk about is denmark versus china now i didn't get to watch this game because i was busy at the time but i did watch some highlights and it wasn't so i expected denmark to you know outplay china but that wasn't the game china came with their a game like China at least tried their best to attack Denmark. Um, though, yes, Denmark was, you know, had an edge over China, but China was also trying. I was very impressed. I, ex I expected a 5 nil, 4 nil Denmark to China, but China really came at Denmark, and I did not see that coming. Obviously, Denmark had an edge over China. You could see that. You could see how um, difficult it was for Denmark because they only managed to score a goal late towards the end of the game so it wasn't a game where you can say oh this one was extremely dominant and this one was being dominated no but it was almost equal equal but the thing is both of the teams were not clinical enough i think denmark was not also clinical enough um they were they had a lot of chances but they were not clinical enough and i think for most of the teams most of the women's teams i think the most the biggest problem for a lot of them is they are not clinical enough they're not finishing off their chances but Kudos to China. I think China played well. I did not expect China to play that well. I didn't expect them to take the game to uh, Denmark, but they did. So it was very interesting. Now, the next game that I want us to talk about is USA versus Vietnam. Now, this game wasn't really surprising. The results actually came the way I thought they would. Granted, I didn't watch this game. I did watch the highlights. And USA was playing amazing football, elite football, which reminded us why they are the current reigning women world cup champions the way they were playing elite level and quality football they just simply played better than vietnam i think they outplayed vietnam and you could see the difference between the two uh teams usa still have it i know a lot of people think usa has gone down in its uh playing abilities but i think they still have the quality in my previous video i talked about the fact that they still had those players that played in the world cup 2019 so because of that experience they still have a shout out for this year's women's world cup so for most people who think oh no usa don't still have the same um they don't still have the same abilities that they had in 2019. I said, don't rule USA out. I still think they have good quality. They are playing elite level kind of football. So USA should have a shout out for this Women's World Cup. So it's been interesting so far, ladies and gentlemen. When we see what has happened thus far, I enjoyed the games for today. Both the shocks that came and the expected ones that came it's been an interesting tournament so far so that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much guys for watching make sure you share like and subscribe make sure you share like and subscribe and turn your notifications on to know when next i post a video